and I'm going to show you some of the uh, isotherms that I collected when I was younger. Okay, for silicon carbide. So this is what uh, the sample looks like on the microscope. The top one is for SEM, scanning electron microscope. The scale bar is 0.2 micron, 200 nanometer. The bottom one is transmission electron microscope. The scale bar is what? 10 nanometer. It's just a different magnifying glass, but more powerful, way more powerful. Optical microscope, you are probably scale bar is one micron, not any better than this. ICM, you can go to finer. TEM, you can go to much finer. Okay, but it's the same material. You see, okay, that th this thing appears to be dense or porous. Uh, under you, the, even SCM is not dense. Under TM, you see it, right? All these porosities in between the powders. And each individual particle, if this is 10 micron, each individual particle, if you see here, is roughly 10 nanometer, right? Roughly 10 nanometer. It's really fine particles. Okay, and then when I did the gas absorption analysis, of course, the vertical axis is what? Volume of gas absorbed per gram of powder. STP means what? Standard temperature and pressure. Okay. The horizontal is so called a relative pressure. Zero means almost close to vacuum. One means one atmosphere. So I'm stepping up the pressure, and you see, okay, the powder initially absorbed some gas. As I increase the pressure, it does increase a little bit. And then it increased a lot dramatically. And then you see, do I have hysteresis loop? Yeah, right? These two are not the square are for so called absorption. The triangles are for desorption. The square is going up in pressure, the triangles are going down in pressure. And at the same pressure, I clearly have a so-called uh, difference in volume, that's so-called hysteresis. We will talk about this a little bit later, and we are using essentially this hysteresis to tell us how much the porosity the material has, the powder has. Okay, so this is actually what uh, you are going to get. And then the common absorption isotherm, that's what I showed before, is only one type of absorption isotherm. Different materials will have different uh, gas absorption behavior. Some of them, the, the so-called absorption isotherm looks like this. Again, vertical axis is V for volume of gas, AD for absorption, horizontal PO or P0, that's your so-called relative pressure. Okay, the type 1 absorption isotherm looks like this. Start from zero, quickly go up, and then increase, slow down, and reach a plateau flat okay these are people after study people believe these are typically micro porous material micro porous material where pores are very small micro porous means the pores quite often are smaller than two nanometer very small for activated carbon for catalysis for like uh, auto absorber you want to remove certain order from something you use activated carbon Microporous material with small external surface. Glassy carbon sometimes also have this. The carbon looks like a glass, shining glass. Okay, microporous. And then we have this, the type 2 absorption isotherm. Again, start from zero. Of course, everything should start from zero because at zero pressure, there should be very little gas. Quickly increase and slowly increase. But we don't have, seems to have a plateau. Just slowly increase and then eventually increase even faster. Okay. And people attribute these type of isotherms so, to so called unrestricted monolayer to multilayer absorption. Monolayer means what? Initially, gas covers one layer. Atoms are packed one layer, but then the tapering up means what? Multi-layer is after the first layer is covered, the gas continue pile on, keep going up, multi-layer. 
make sense mauna layer to mauna layer absorption on a non porous which means the surface like silicon wafer not much pore not much pore it's come flat at atomic scale not many pores for me to go okay and then we have this start from zero instead of quickly take up it doesn't really take up very very slow and then go up it's about very weak or sorbate absorbent interaction okay let's pause a little bit absorbent absorbent you may be unfamiliar with this word absorbent means just the gas molecule absorbent is essentially your solid material which means the solid does it like the gas or does not like the gas does not like the gas very much you increase the pressure not much is going onto the surface which means the surface doesn't really like this gas it doesn't want to physically absorb okay but eventually you force it onto the surface because you are increasing the pressure okay then we have this which is what i showed just now for my silicon carbide powder synthesized right start from zero quickly increase slow increase quick increase but then plateau at the end the plateau but then this option i have a so-called uh, hysteresis so this is monolayer to multi-layer absorption but with read to yourself capillary condensation it means the gas phase as it absorbs multi-layer it essentially becomes like a liquid multi-layer packed gas onto the surface that behaving like a liquid that's what it is about in mesoporous material and reaching saturation it's not like keep going up it's plateauing out plateauing which means pretty much at that point all the porosities are filled with gas absorbed gas but that absorbed gas is not behaving like gas it's more behaving like a capillary condensation it's behaving like a liquid okay and then this one weak absorption similar to this one but also with capillary condensation you see this and that one similar increased pressure not much picking up but towards the end that's capillary condensation into the material and then multi-stage absorption non-polar gas on homogeneous surface in here i think the number four is quite often very important number one is also quite often very important these two one and four are more common and very important for catalysis application okay <laughs> 